In a previous video, I showed you how to train your own next room, next room prediction model using a video. Um, in this video, I'm actually gonna show you how to generate those images. So uh, I'm gonna assume that you've already gone through the training video. If you haven't, I definitely recommend checking that out. You can find that video uh, link to either, I'll add it in the video notes, but also you can find it from here, from my ML Art Collabs um, repo. Let's go ahead and get this opened. And uh, I'm gonna assume that basically what happened is you trained it for maybe 20 hours, it stopped, and you need to reconnect everything from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up in Colab. And we've got our notebook here, so we're gonna go ahead and connect. And we're gonna mount our Google Drive because we've saved all of our files into Google Drive. And then if I come over here to files, refresh, I've got drive, I've got my drive, I've got, uh, what am I looking for here? NFP collab, yep, NFP collab. Now, uh, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, there's a weird bug inside a collab where basically any folder named checkpoints, if you try to open it and look at it, it's gonna be empty. So what we're gonna actually need to do is go directly to drive and check it out. So I've actually gone in here, I've gone to checkpoints and then I've opened up Cuttlefish 1, which was the video I was previously training, and you'll see in here I have a bunch of um, net G and net D. So this is our generator, this is our discriminator, and each of these numbers is the epoch that it has been trained for. So I did train every single epoch. Um, this will basically blow up your Google Drive. This is probably like, I don't know, probably like 50 gigabytes of files here, if not more. So uh, just be aware of that issue. Um, anyway, so we're ready to sort of like start drawing some images here. Um, so let's see, we've got our drive mounted, um, and I've already installed this. So I'm gonna run the second cell, which is basically um, moving into, uh, seeding into our drive folder, and then uh, installing dominate, which is just a dependency that we need uh, to run on Collab. I'm gonna skip extract frames, I'm gonna stick, skip train model, and I'm gonna jump to generating videos. So the most easy, the simplest, the simplest way to do this is actually just to, um, run this command. So generate video, um, we're going to use cuttlefish. So name, is, uh, name isn't name is as important here. Um, I generally just like to always name it whatever my data set is named, just that, that way I have it. Um, this is going to generate a folder. Um, if it doesn't already exist, name cuttlefish1 and stick your outputs in there. This data root is very important. This must point to your data set. Um, so in most cases, it's going to be dot slash data set and then whatever the name of your data set is. Uh, we've got a couple other features here, which is frames per second. So how long do we, or how many, what's the frame rate we want our video to be? And then how many frames do we want to generate? So this is going to generate, let's see, um, 600 divided by 24. It's going to generate a 25 second video. And then which epoch? Uh, this is always default to the latest. So I could actually remove this and it would be the same thing. So this is the simplest uh, command you can run in order to generate the video. Um, so let's go ahead and run it and let's see what happens. So what this is going to do is it's going to set up the generator uh, and start to generate video. And it's going to um, take the first 60 frames of this folder. So it's going to um, do frame 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 60. And then when it hits 60, it's going to send 60 to the generator. And the generator is going to generate the next frame from that 60. Then it's going to take that frame that it just produced, and it's going to produce another frame based on that frame, another one based on that one, another one based on that one, until it hits 600. So this is gonna run for a little bit of time here. Um, depending on how much, I'll sort of see how long it's gonna take here. I might pause the video and come back, um, but just be aware that that's what's, what's happening here. So if we actually go over to our data set, we can sort of see um, go here, whoops, that's one folder too many in here. And then inside of data sets, you will see there is cuttlefish one and inside of test frames, you'll see that goes one to 60, right? So it's gonna take this frame,
and it's going to generate the next video from or next frame from this from this particular frame. Let's see how we're doing over here. Cool. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back uh, and then I'll show you um, some additional features to do with this. Okay. So our video is ready to go here. Uh, you'll see it ran. It generated 600 frames and it output a video that is at this um, path. You'll see here at the end, there's another dash at the end of S FPS. You, you might not have that dash. Um, this is what happens if uh, I previously have already generated this exact same command. It'll just add a second video of uh, and add a dash at the end. So this is good to go. Um, so I think let's take a look at this um, here. So let's add this uh, snippet here of looking at a video. So uh, this is a cool little snippet that we can use in CoLab to make sure that we're, or to look at our video. Um, I'm gonna grab this path and paste this path in here. Um, this is just a nice little way to look at video. Um, I think the video is, what's the video? Is it 1280 by 720? Okay, so let's try to see this. This sometimes takes a little while to run depending on how long your video is. Um, because the thing is doing this base 64 encoding, which is like kind of messy. Interesting, a Google Drive error has occurred. Let's find out what's going on there. Well, if this doesn't work, uh, there's another trick, which is just like going out. There we go. All right, cool. So let's play this and see what happened. So you can sort of see where it switched on, right? So it switched over and it started to like uh, move into this new animation. Now you'll see this has been trained for 200 epochs. It's not perfect, um, but it is like pretty interesting. Um, it's got some of the flashy sort of next frame prediction stuff you'll see, which are the sort of like convolutional blobs I would describe them as that are shooting down. Um, this is pretty good. I can work with this. So this is, again, remember this is the latest epochs. This is 200 epochs in total. Um, let's go ahead and run this video again, but let's change our command. Um, to look at an earlier epoch. So we're going to do which epoch. Um, and now I can put in a number. Now, one thing that's important to know is when you, the number you put in, um, let's go back to our trained data. Let's go to checkpoints, cuttlefish one. So the number you put in here um, is going to correspond to the generator file that you have. So one thing that's really important to note is if you set your epoch frequency in your training to five and you don't see a 16 underscore net G, um, you can't use the 16th epoch. So it has to be a file that exists here. So because I've done this for every single epoch, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna choose one that's like fairly early just so you can see how different the early trainings are from later. I'm gonna choose like 75, let's go 75. So I'm gonna run this. Um, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back when this is ready to go again. We have another video ready to go, so let's take a look at this one. So I'm going to once again, grab this path, paste it in here. Uh, you will notice that this video uh, tells you what epoch you're using. So this is epoch 75. This is a nice way to be able to go back and uh, find those videos again or like retrain for a longer period of time. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. So one thing I should note is that uh, videos using the exact same epoch and the exact same uh, start frame should be deterministic. So that means if you run this exact same command again, um, you should get the exact same video. But if you train it for a longer period of time, you'll get additional frames afterward. Um, so it's just important to remember that um, you know you can't run this over and over and over again with 600 frames and expect different videos using the same epoch and the same start frame. So kind of interesting. Um, one thing I tend to notice is that in earlier uh, frames, you tend to get this weird glitchy pattern. Um, and I'll say like, I actually much prefer this video to the other style. So there's another thing to remember is that each epoch, well, there's a lot of like, uh, these are very chaotic systems. And I tend to find each epoch has slightly different or sometimes large differences um, in the way that they work. Uh, usually I actually find that Early epochs don't look as nice as later epochs, but uh, in this case, maybe for a reason, I just happen to like this video. So this is epoch 75. Uh, again, you could go and look at every single epoch if you're like a perfectionist and you have to find the best version of everything. You could do that. That's going to be pretty time consuming, um, sharing 200 different epochs of videos. 
uh, I generally tend to jump about every 10 or every 25 just to sort of play with it and see if I even like it. Um, so we've now generated using two different epochs, so we can like look at all the experiments through that. There's one other uh, argument that I recommend you play with, um, and that is the start frame. So as I mentioned, um, when you run this uh, just as is, you will always get uh, the 60th frame, which takes from that um, data set. It'll always take the 60th frame to start the generation from. But if you've ever, you know, if you think about how these things work, that it's at different frames, you should get a different result, right? Um, because not every frame is the exact same. So if we go back here and we go to uh, our pix to pix HD again, we go look at data sets and we look at cuttlefish, and we look at our training frames. Um, so test frames will only ever have 60 frames in it because that tends to be the text testing length. Um, whereas these other frames, or the train frames will be much longer. This will be how long your video is. Um, so if I compare, let's say frame 60. So if I compare frame 60, let's also look at what, um, maybe what frame, well, let's just look at the very last frame of this video is. So 150. So there's minor differences in this video. In other videos you use, you might have larger differences. Um, or even let's maybe look at frame one. Yeah, so frame one is pretty interesting in how it's much more, uh, there's a lot more of this pattern here. So let's actually start with this frame. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, just come back over here, and we're going to do dash dash start underscore from. And then we need to give it the path to the video. So we're going to do dot slash or sorry, the, the path to the frame itself. So data set slash cuttlefish one, and then we want to do train frames. And I'm letting Colab sort of help uh, recommend what path I use. And then we want frame, so we want frame dash zero, zero, zero. And this is gonna give me dash zero, 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 one. So we want that frame. Uh, now, a little note about this is that if you use this frame, um, it's actually not going to give you that little run up to the video. Um, it's just going to give you sort of like the very first frame and generate from that. So don't expect that little bit of nice little run up where it's showing you uh, what the real video looks like and that it switches. This is just going to jump directly from that frame. So let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I'm going to pause my machine for one last time or pause the recording for one last time. Um, oh, interesting. So I don't know what happened there. I think I know what's happening here. Um, this is probably a bug in my system. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video. I'm going to uh, fix this bug and then I will generate the video and then I'll come back and I will push that change to the repo to make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay, it turned out that my repo was not up to date. I was using an out of date repo. If you use the, the latest version or you've recorded, like done this process recently, which you probably have just based on when you watch these, this should work fine. Um, so I got an error. I just updated my repo, ran it, and it worked fine. Um, so we now have another video. So this time you'll see that this video um, tells you it's the epoch of latest and that it is working from this frame. So frame dash zero 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 one dot JPEG. So we're going to take that path and we're going to paste that in here. And we're going to take a look at this video. Cool. And you'll see this is our starting frame, right? So we started from additional of a different from a different frame. We run this. You get a pretty different looking video. Um, it jumps rel relatively quickly to what we've sort of expected or seen. But again, remember that it started from a different place. So it started from here, which means sort of like in the way these feedback systems work is you're going to get a different video um, all the way through it. So. In this particular example, I would probably train this for a little bit longer. I might train it for 400 epochs and just sort of see if I get uh, a little bit more of that learning from that beginning. Um, but this is still a, an interesting example. And my guess is that videos you train on will have different sort of uh, feeling to them as well. So now again, I could use this start frame and I could actually change um, my epoch. I could play around with this a lot. Um, and in fact, I won't cover it in this video, but at the bottom here, there is sort of this, um, 
this other like system uh, where you can like sort of generate multiple videos at once um, by providing it a data set folder and then some commands and some other things. Um, you can read through this and sort of, I, I, if you use Python or whatever, you'll be able to figure this out. I don't generally recommend that anyone uses this. This is sort of here for me. Um, but if you want to use it, you can. Just know this will generate a ton of videos. Uh, and this can take a long time to process this, depending on how many frames you have in your data set. Um, the skip count is sort of important in that you don't want to generate this on every single frame. If you do, you're going to have a ton of videos and honestly it won't be that different. So generally use skip count. Um, this number should be something like, you know, a little bit smaller than your than your train data set, or sorry, I guess your train data set. Um, so in the case of this one, I might do like 50. Um, this is a, I previously used this on a very long video. So um, you can go ahead and do that. And then you'll edit a little bit of these names and things. Um, if anyone's really, really interested in how to work this, I can run a video on this. But this is basically a way to like do multi-processing. So you can multi -pro uh, process multiple videos at once. Um, but just know this is a little, this will probably break pretty easily if you mess with, it, mess with it. So just be aware of that, but you can use it if you want to. Okay, so that is uh, pretty much the entire video that this covers like some of the most important parts of generating a video, which is you know really just um, playing with epoch count and then playing with where you start from. Um, you can also play with how many, uh, how, lo how long your video is. Um, generally what I would do is I test, you know, around 600. That's like a short period of, of frames and it's just enough to sort of like see how something works. And if I really like a particular epoch, I'll, ru I'll up this to, you know, 1440 or something. 1440 is a full minute. Um, so this will be a minute long video. What I tend to find is that, um, at the very beginning of these videos, they tend to be pretty stable. And then as you get further and further along and they start doing weirder and weirder things, like there might be moments where like things flash or other, other things. Um, and it's just because you're getting further and further away from like basically the known source or the ground truth that, um, that these models are used to working with. So play with this length as well. Like you could make an hour long video. Um, it might be a little boring after a while, but, um, you might find some really, really interesting moments in there. And again, what I sort of recommend doing then is like, maybe you find a really interesting moment and you clip it out and then use it in, in some other way. Um, so that's pretty much it for generating um, next stream prediction videos. Uh, please feel free to drop me a note on YouTube or in Slack if you have questions about anything I've covered here. Um, and I'll see you next time.